Good day, everybody. I hope you're having a great Tuesday. I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, and it's wonderful to see you all. Hello, Gareth, Mafu, Caroline, Fatih. Hello. Um, I am way too saturated. I have redid all of my um my settings so let me wow yeah i'm let me bring that down it's looking better my keen is a little bit messed up i can see it over this way so well let me let me do this so what i'm doing right now is i am trying there we go ah okay let's go ahead and close out of that that's better hello everybody all right now hopefully we are going to uh get back into this i've changed all my settings for Adobe Live and also for the Facebook, Photoshop, and Lightroom stream I did. So now I'm trying to get everything back together. Um, I look too bright. I <laughs> look too bright. This is hilarious. I apologize, everybody. I'm sorry. But let me change a different setting here. Okay, I think that's better. All right, great way to start the stream. Let's see, what did I miss? Mafu saying, wait, wait, can I send a little Sean a, send little Sean a hello? Of course you can. Henrik, hello. Um, it is wonderful to see all of you. I am trying to get back into the swing of things. So let's go ahead, take care of introductions. Hello everybody, my name is Sean Kozel. I'm a photographer. I am based in Germany. I am also an Adobe Express ambassador. Um, thanks for the circus poster. To whom, Henrik? To whom? Oh, my circus poster! <laughs> if you're watching this on... Um, congratulations on the badge. What badge? What is happening here, people? You guys... Uh. Okay. Anki, hello. All right. If you're watching this on Behance, you can click on that way. My icon that's all the way up at the top over there. And it'll take you to my Behance page. Which here... This stream is starting out horrible. Um... You can check out some of my past live streams by clicking on live streams right there. If you like what I do, please feel free to subscribe. Um, we've got some things to talk about when it comes to Behance, and we'll be starting that shortly. But if you're watching this on YouTube or Twitch, feel free to click on the link tree, and you can come over here to Behance because chat's going. Chat's going. Um, it's awesome. I'm digging it. If you do, do I have Linktree open? I do. Oh, an Adobe Creative Educator Level 2. I started doing that. Devlin, hello. I'm here but lurking for a while. Uh, if you jump into my Linktree, if you scroll down, you're going to see two things. One, you're going to see join my Discord, which we'll be talking about the Discord in a moment. Also, a little higher up near the top, you can jump over into Behance. And if you're new here, you can give me a follow and you'll be notified when I go live. Okay, let's see here. Did something wrong happen to Behance? No, 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 let's jump into the Discord. And I guess let's start with that. So I am in the Behance Discord and this let me copy this and put this into chat for all of you to follow along. Um, it says, 
We have exciting news to share. You can now upload and sell your digital assets directly on Behance and read more about it on the link I put into chat. So sell downloadable assets. Um, you will have to be part of Stripe. Uh, let's see here. Let me scroll down. You can sell J JPEGs, PNGs, SVGs, PSDs, AI files, PDFs, TTF, TTFs, and more. Oliver, hello. So this is really cool. Um, I, for, at least for me right now, I dove into it and started uh, looking into it and I couldn't set it up yet. I'm part of Stripe, I'm all of that. But when you upload assets to a project, you can sell it. So I think that's cool. Lady Jane, A up duck. Great stream today, Jane. Great stream. Uh, I hope that also the Adobe stock assets maybe find the way to sell them over at Behance. Well, on Behance, Henrik, if you look here, you can actually look at people's Adobe stock. Uh, Stripe is like a PayPal. But for people to pay you, you don't have to um, actually have a an account, a Stripe account. So they can pay you directly from like a debit card or a credit card. So when you subscribe to people, you are actually paying um, to Stripe. And then Stripe, once a month, sends me money or puts it into my account, actually. So it works. It's worked well for me. I'll put it that way. But I think this is really cool. Um, everybody, make sure to check this out, being able to sell your assets directly onto Behance. I think that's a good idea. You know, um, Adobe slash Behance is trying to look out for us artists. Jane says, thanks, Sean. Sadly, it may stay private unless I do another replay. That phone call was an emergency that I ended up answering. Oh, wow. Okay, Jane. Uh, hopefully everything is okay. Vandenberg, hello. Welcome in. So anyway, make sure to check that out. Um, this will be actually quite cool, I think. Because I know some of you like Gareth Williams in chat, so make sure anybody in chat, click on Gareth's icon, not his name, click on his icon, and uh, you can check out some of his 3D work. So being able to maybe sell SVGs and whatnot, extra cash. It sure sounds like a great way to earn some money on your creations. It is. I think it's a great idea. All right. I'm seeing if there's any more questions about that. And if anybody is just jumping in, scroll up in chat and you will see the link that I'm talking about. Okay. Let's get back into my discord. Uh, if you are new to my discord, We've got a few things. Let me go ahead, close this down and get into Discord. And there's Henrik right there. First off, um, I've got announcements here at the top. And anything coming up Adobe related that uh, not fully about me, but like the Youngblood uh, collaboration with Adobe, anything that I get, I will pass it along to you. Also, I am an affiliate for Adobe products, so I've got Adobe links right here at the top. You can click on this, go through if there's if you're looking for the photography plan or a full CC, that we've got all the plans right here. So, you can actually click into here. We've got Adobe Express, 30-day free trial. And let's scroll down. If today I am going to be um, working on your photos. And so in the future, if you have unedited photos that you would like to see how I would edit, 
this is where you put them. So Henrik, we've got Vikram sent some over. He's, he's actually sent over files. So you could use a, a WeTransfer, something like that. Bruce, happy Tuesday, good to see you. We've got Doris, who's given me a challenge. And so Lydia, other people have sent their files over. Let's jump over into screen chat. And Katarina is not here, but this is actually, I found rather interesting. Let me turn a light on. There we go. So um, Katarina was asking about lights, stream lights, LED lights. And so there's a couple different things that she was looking at and was asking for opinions on it. And one of the things to be aware of is the smaller the light, the harsher it's going to be on you. So I have a large soft box over there. I've got a light bar, an LED light bar about this long. And then I've got a small LED Luma cube, not sponsored, should be right here. And that's just filling in this area. So if you are looking for streaming, you probably don't want to get anything too small like this one here, this Godox. Um, I've got a few of them. Just remember, bigger the better. Sandrine, hello. Good to see you. I'm seeing if I missed anybody in chat. Nope. So I thought that was a really interesting thing to, to kind of talk about. Lights, especially LEDs, you can, um, are really inexpensive. So I know some people use like a ring light. I'm not a big fan of ring lights, but um, some people like them. So yeah, just see see what's in your budget and, and um, check it out, just Google it. All right, moving on. So if you wanna share your work with the community, we've got two feeds here. We've got the community artwork and also project feedback. So let's see what we've got here. Boom. Speaking of Gareth Williams, let's see what Gareth says. I've been taking part in another challenge called the March of Robots. I started by uh, hoping to keep up, keep up busy, soon fell behind. <laughs> so far, in fact, that day three wasn't posted until day five and my and my entry that was meant to be for day seven has just finished on day 12. So we'll not be posting that to Instagram until later in the week. Anyway, here is day seven moon or is it day 16 planet? That is cool, Gareth. That is, I really dig this. Great, great job with the eyes. I mean, this is, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Uh, Sandrine's got uh, Wally vibes, but great job with the eyes to actually give it personality. Yeah. Is this a drawing or photo collage? Angie, hello. This is a painting, I believe. I mean, you can you can really see the brush strokes, which I like. A uh, great job on the planet itself with the coloring. Great shadow work, just overall. I mean, this is one of those things. Gareth, you did an amazing job because if you look here, the shadow that's occurring from this robot and then you follow the shadow on the planet, it's the same. There's little things like that, that if it's not right, your brain will know it's not right. You may not know why, but you just think like, uh, something's not right here. But Gareth nails it. So I love it. I love it. This is like, this is like a, a mash between a Tonka dump truck and Wally. -E but great job on the eyes. 
That's that's awesome. That is awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Gareth. Keep them coming. Angie says some people says they never land the moon. This is evident. Yeah. Lydia, hello. Okay. I think unpop. Oh, San Sandrine is throwing it down. Uh, I think unpopular opinion that this is the best Pixar movie talking about um, Wally. -E. Wait a minute. Let me reopen this because Bruce is saying uh, even under the eyes, the shadow. Oh, yeah. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. All right. <clears throat> so, Frank, pixel stretching is a fun exercise. Great stream on Adobe Live last week. Hope it was the first of a long series. Let's check this out. Great work, Frank. I'm digging. I'm digging the grain that you've got going on back here for the shadow. Really nice work. Yeah, that is cool. That's nice. Great work. Nice. And you know what? This is... This is really cool. The fact that I inspired Frank to make this. Um, I, I didn't expect it. I did not expect it. But Frank, thank you. I inspire people. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Now we have Sandrine, who is in chat. Really good stuff, Frank, as per usual, I must say. Yes, he's amazing. Uh, I got something for you. Maybe you can combine the two. How to create ashes and embers. Oh, okay. This is a tutorial. But this is what I wanted to show by Sandrine. This is awesome. I love this. And I saw this before Sandrine posted. And uh, the one thing that I didn't add Sandrine, this bird here, because I'm, I'm going to give a spoiler here. There were two, two versions. And this bird here, it brings your eye. You're following the, the where the bird is looking and it brings it completely up. So this feels with the bird right there, it feels so perfect that it just brings you up into the sky of birds. So I gotta say, I absolutely love this. And I would love to see how you made this. Yeah, so good, so good. Lydia says this poster is so cool. It is. Sandrine says, I agree now. It's so obvious when someone says this. It's, yeah, you know, um, and I think Jane discussed that it feels like this bird is like joining the flock, which I got to agree. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say about it. Caroline says, love that there's no color. It's simple and brilliant. Yeah, for as a monochrome, I would say, but simple? <laughs> I wouldn't even know where to, where to start with this. Sandrine says, I will try to make a process video. Wow. Uh, Anki says, that's the good thing to share your work as to get others' eyes on it. It is. It really is. Uh, it's always, you know, I always hear that from photographers uh, that will send out some of their photos that they've been editing just to get friends feedback. But also here, I think is really important that you post your work and the fact that not only do I get to show it off and, you know, we get to talk about you, get, send some love to the community, but usually we also get some good feedback. You know, if something is slightly wrong or something is right, like Gareth's 
uh, robot talking about shadows. So I think it's really cool to be able to point things out that people may not, may not, it may not be obvious to everybody. So I think it's good. Sandrine says the process was so long that cutting it into a few seconds misses all the good bits. You could do it live, Sandrine. <laughs> I love it. Great work, Sandrine. Absolutely give that a hundred stars and we'll give it a thumbs up too. Okay. Do we have any project feedbacks? We do. Franck is back. I worked on my ABC badge project. Any thoughts? Okay. Let's see here. <clears throat> For those of you that do not know, ABC is the Adobe Banana Crew. Let me click out of this. And uh, as you can see up here at the top, founder, the ABCs. That's me. You know what? I'm doing this the wrong way. Let's, let's, let's make this big. If we're going to actually have to judge which ones and key you know exactly where to share your work come on buddy okay let's get in here version one <clears throat> now for those of you that do not know frank we have we as the collective us the community we have been talking or trying to talk to frank to actually start making some stickers. So he wanted to remake this. Okay, the text. <sighs> I don't know if I like that text. He went with a darker circle. Okay, I see what, what's going on. Uh, so what we have here, we've got version one and then version two, which the different difference is the text, the fonts used. Franck. Yeah, we already checked out your pixel stretch. Uh, Franck, good work. And then with three and four, Franck darkened up the circles, the stroke around so let me know in chat which one you like i think i'm going with you bruce the only difference not the difference the only problem that i have i do like I like this font better. The problem that I'm having is the the contrast. And what do you got going there? What is that? What is four again? Let me bring up four. Yeah, Frank, hey, you gotta check this out. You've got something going on. Um for on one and three on the tip. It looks like you have an additional stroke or a mask or something. It's not on two and four, but okay. <clears throat> since since Frank asked, this is what we've got going on. Um, we have the black stroke there. We have a light brown, and then it looks like the font is in a dark brown. So I think the colors are off, or so, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel cohesive as much as this. Um, I really wonder what your thought is about maybe using the same color? I don't know. 
but I I'm do, I'm thinking three, but let's see. Let's go back. Uh, oh, Caroline and I we always fight about fonts. Okay, Bruce says three does it for me. Sandrine says three all the way. Henrik says I would prefer the version one for logos and stuff. I prefer yeah, keep it simple principle. Caroline says I like the font on number two. Um. Banana for scale. That's funny. Anki says like number three. Stuart says four. Four is the one for me. The darker stroke and the fonts work well with the banana. Okay. Ah, Frank says oop. I will check that later. Um. I think it was to mimic the offset, but it came out the wrong color. Yeah, I think so, Sandrine. Okay. The other end of the pencil is the same. Let me jump in. Oh, yep, yep. I see it now. <laughs> Caroline, you are correct. It's okay to disagree. That's, that's called art. Um, Joan, hello, welcome in. Okay, Frank says, I like the sans serif with dark circles, but I found the pencil was lost in it, so I tried different colors. I think, okay, this is interesting that you say that. The idea that there's a pencil in the banana um, is almost one of those things like, oh, it's it's something else to discover. Simply because, okay, the Adobe Banana Crew, we get it. If For those of you that work in Photoshop, uh, there, let me open up, photo, have Photoshop here, bring this, and up above my head is... The banana tool right there so that's where this is coming from um, the Adobe banana crew you can see the banana and then all of a sudden maybe you see the pencil second so I think it's good I think it's actually quite good and it's okay that it's a little bit lost uh, because it's supposed to be a surprise just something out of the ordinary but now Frank here, here's a question. Alessandra, hello, good afternoon. Um, Devlin says, the thick lines of the circles complete, compete with the composition overall. Eh. Number three is the original version. Ah. Uh, which one do you like, Frank? Let me know. And Devlin, you know what? If you're turning this into stickers, I'm actually, I'm okay with the thickness. If this is, if this is going to be sold as stickers, I'm okay with it. But I do understand what you're saying. All right. I'm waiting for Frank to tell me which one he likes the best. waiting for Frank. Oh, that would be the yeah, t-shirts. That would look great. I'd want one of those. Okay. Frank is not telling me which one he likes. So we're going to continue on, I guess. Small logo on front, large on the back. Yep. Uh, I would try a version without the thick lines. Alex, hello, with some AR with arrow on it. How would you do that? Yeah, that, that would actually be pretty cool. Oh, I already replied. Look at the top. Okay, number three. Uh, can I have the DC link? Scroll down right below chat. And, or right below the 
uh, the stream and you'll see a link that says join Sean's Discord. Okay. I can see the banana floating. I know Alex, Alex would nail that. He would nail that. All right. Number three. Yeah, yeah. Frank, thank you so much. Oh, Oliver Mod Power, thank you. Okay. And I think that's all we've got in the Discord. All right. Before we get started editing your photos, let me scroll up to the top. Um I think what we're going to do for the creative circus is probably go a couple more weeks. Uh, I'm thinking possibly the end of the month. I don't have a specific date yet, but for the community challenge, for anybody new here on my discord, we are doing a community challenge. It's the creative circus. And you can make anything you want using any app you would like, or even traditional artwork. We've got a series of briefs down below made with the community. If you need any help coming up with anything, um, if you put, don't post it to my discord, but you post it to Instagram, make sure that you use the hashtag creative circus spelt just like that. Um, let me jump in here. Okay. So on Instagram, the hashtag creative circus, you can see some of Gareth's and Stewart's and Sandrine, uh, their work, and Mafu down below. Uh, I don't know why your other ones aren't coming up. Oh, here we go. So, um, yeah, I think what we're going to do is probably go a couple more weeks. And for those of you that do not know, I will be giving away a fanny pack, some metal pins, and a waterproof a waterproof bluetooth speaker so there's going to be two winners uh i will be selecting one and then we will be doing a um bum bag banana bag yeah yeah whatever you want to call them um i will be selecting a winner and then we will be doing a random drawing for those two winners and we'll be splitting those prizes up between the two Okay, so that is on my Discord. So if you're new here, make sure to check it out. Steven Booth, hello. Uh, Frank says, I'm so sorry, Sean. I failed to do something good for the Creative Circus Challenge. Frank, you got time. If you have time, there's time. Um, so we're, we're, I don't have a specific date yet. I'll come up with it and post it here on the Discord when the deadline is. Okay, let's see. Any more questions, comments? Okay, I'm just making sure that I didn't miss anything in chat, and I think we're good. Vicky, Vikram says you need to call your mom and tell her to select the best two. That's funny. Uh, Frank says lost my inspiration, maybe because of the ba ba banana bag. Oh, general. Hello there. Come on. I'm, I'm giving merch away. You guys are killing me. Okay. We are going to jump into Lightroom Classic. Uh, we still have a bunch of photos uh, that we can work on. So one of the ones, and I'm thinking getting back into here, going into your photos to edit. Doris asked me to turn this into a night shot. 
So I may get into that in a little bit later if there's time. RB, hello. So um, that's one of the things that I am thinking about doing. But let's take a look. Hitting G, getting back into the grid. Uh, let's see where... We've got a lot by Vikram. We've got Henrik. Now, there is one that I want to talk about really quick before we start diving into things. And this is going to be kind of a basic thing to talk about, but I think it's important. Uh, over the weekend, Jennifer Poole asked me uh, my opinion, my thoughts on this photo. She said this is one of her best landscapes or most loved landscapes. So um, I asked if I could see the original and this is what she sent to me. Now, one, this photo here, there's, there's something not right with it and I didn't, couldn't put my finger on it until I saw this one. Michelle, hello. Uh, are those plant cutter machines? They look like balers, actually. Yeah, they're they're round balers. For those of you that do not know about architect or architecture, agriculture. Uh, once the grass is cut and dried, uh, these balers will actually. I think they're round balers. Uh, will scoop it up and then. They will make round bales. So that's what those are. Okay. Okay, I'm... I can't read that. I can't read that, Steven. Talking about an all-female punk band from the U.S. They were surprised by how popular they were when they came to the U.K. I can't, I can't think, I can't read that out loud. Um, what do I think of your logo in project feedback? Jahan, um, okay. You know, future reference, be more chatty in chat before just asking me to look at your work. I didn't, didn't read the name, Oliver. Did not read the name. Uh, I can tell you right now that we, uh, let's get into project feedback. <sighs> this is a project I worked on. I was, while I was free. Okay. Here. No, Johan, don't, you don't need to apologize. Uh, <clears throat> within this, um, this community, you have a series of different artists and when it comes to logos we want to see your process we don't want to see a final result alex have a great day thanks for stopping in um i mean we want to see a final result but we want to see a project or a process that got you there we are all trying to learn from each other and so the idea isn't so much of, hey, look at my logo. It's, um, this is how I got to this point, how you think, how you worked through your problems. So that is one of the things, if you make a Behance project with a logo in it, um, let's just say one logo, it doesn't matter. Um, it really doesn't. What we want to see and even people that are looking to employ you is not the fact that you can get to a finished product, product, which is very important, but it's how you can be a problem solver, how you can work through the process of a brief to the final project. We want to see sketches. We want to see all of the uh, variations that you have. And that's another thing. This logo here with just one logo, this is not what you would ever send to a client. You need it in black. You need it in white. You need to do mock-ups. There's so much that needs to go into this rather than just making a logo and saying, here you go. 
So we even want to see the variations. So if you're going to post something like this, show me different variations. Um, John says, yeah, I understand. I will put more of the stuff there. Thanks for the feedback. No, thank you for posting. I mean, it's, it's important of, it's, of, it's important of learning how to present yourself depending upon where you're presenting yourself. So, uh, why does it, okay. Sandrine says, and we also need the thinking behind, which is a brief, and why does it look that way? The reason, branding, colors, concept, fonts, that's the other thing. If you're going to do this, we need colors, we need fonts, we need hex codes. Um, I mean, there's a whole load that goes into this that if you're just sending out a 1920 by 1080, uh, there's a whole lot of information that you can be putting here that's going to help you in the long run. So... Even some background. Yeah, that's true. But thank you for posting that. Jazzy. I'm going to have to remember that. Jazzy. Okay. Jumping back into Lightroom Classic. Um, so, back into Jennifer's uh, photo. One of the issues that I had here is it's off-balanced. That's the big problem that I'm having. When I look at this photo here, it, it, it dawned on me what the issue was. So very simply, if we go into here, we hit D for develop and cropping is one of the, can be one of the most important things that you do. Um, let's go ahead and hit O for our overlays. And let's use that for right now. For what I'm looking at has no golden ratio. What, what Hendrick, what, what are all these? <laughs> You've, and then if you hold a uh, uh, shift down, you can move them around. I think they've got all the overlays that are really needed. <laughs> We can flip them. I'm holding shift and O to flip them. So, yeah. We got a lot. We got a lot. Uh, all right. Let's see here. So, one of the things that I'm thinking about is you need to look as to what the subject is. And you are trying to bring the eye to the subject. Now, Jennifer said that she loves the agriculture that's in the region she lives in, and that's why she loves these type of um, snowy fields. So, in reality, the shot is composed poorly due to the fact that these are so close to the edge. Um, let me... Let me go just get out of the crop really quick. Let's reset, close. So you can see that she's tried to bring this over, but let's get back into the crop. Jennifer is here. Okay. <clears throat> uh, hi, Bruce's mom. It is great to see you. I hope you're having a great day. All right. So to begin with, what I am looking for is to create some type of balance. Now, if we end up keeping the same crop, what we can do is I am looking at the snow over here in comparison to the, the, the melted snow over on this side. So cropping it down quite a bit is perfectly fine. Now you've got all these leading lines that are taking you back to the balers. So, you know, over in this area, let me make it big again. You know, unless there was a deer, you know, the most exciting thing here 
is this tree line. But we're actually probably going to get rid of it. Um, I do like taking this down. Now, as for the leading line, the break here in the snow, I want to keep that. I'm going to try to keep that as much as I can. Uh, looking up here, where am I going to break it at? So I think I want to crop it between these two trees right up there so we can bring it down a little bit further right about there. Now we've got using the rule of thirds just basically here. So we've got our sky in a third. We've got our mid ground and snow, our, our, our machinery and mid ground. And then the foreground, we've got a bird right here and we've got the melting snow and the beginning of the tracks. So I think right there is an okay start just so we can get an idea. So this is the crop that Jennifer sent me or asked me to look at. And this is where I'm going. Um, actually, I feel I could crop a little bit more because I'm still now we're overpowered by the snow so again I'm making sure that we're good here with this leading line in the corner um, I actually don't like Well, that's okay, Oliver. Just like how Caroline was talking about uh, fonts. It's okay. It's okay to be wrong, Oliver. Because if people weren't wrong, how do you know you're right? Lydia says, oh, there's a bird on the bottom. Yeah. That's one of those things that's supposed to be a little bit of a surprise. And the funny thing is, I did not really notice it until... I saw it because here it's it's gone. It's no idea what it is. No clue. <clears throat> oh, Oliver. That is feeling better to me. Jennifer says, yeah, that was sad about mine. It just blended and disappeared. Yeah, well, you brought in way, I mean, I understand what you're, what you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, it's okay to be wrong because how would you know if you're right? <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Uh, um, well, <clears throat> I mean, if you added so much grunge into it to really make everything pop out. Now, here's the downfall, just so everybody knows. I took this photo off of Instagram. So this photo here, um, it could have been compressed. It could have been messed up by Instagram. There's many things like Jennifer could be looking at this photo going, this is not what mine looks like. So um, I apologize, Jennifer but this is the only way I could get your photo. Bruce says, thank you for the community love. I mentioned that everyone says hello and that just got her up. Remember at 91, that makes anyone feel great. So thank you. Bruce, you are so welcome. All moms are welcome here. <laughs> uh, okay, so I wasn't actually going to dive in and edit this, but I'm this far, so we're, we're going to do it. We're going to we're going to go ahead and do this. So first off, we're going to bring down the highlights just a little bit. Uh, as for the coloring, we could make it a little cooler just simply because it is a winter photo. Um, I'm not seeing 
a lot of warmth in it. You know, if we if we try to warm it up, we're going in the wrong direction. So just just a tiny bit, tiny bit of cooling. Yeah, tiny bit of cooling. Uh, we can bring up our shadows and actually, let's not do it that way. We are gonna go ahead and let's grab, let's grab a mask. We are gonna go in and come up here to the range and we're gonna use a luminance range. Might be easier with color grading than temp on a JPEG. Good tip. We're gonna grab that right there. And we're going to go subtract. We're gonna grab a brush. We're gonna make it bigger. And I wanna make sure that we are not affecting a lot of this foreground. So we're gonna just go ahead, paint this away really fast. If I want to affect the foreground, I'll make another mask. Making sure we get everything out. There we go. Now with this, let's just increase the shadows a little bit so we can get some of that texture in the trees. And I like that. Let's call this mask trees. And let's see here. We not really getting much color in there, but let's go ahead. We're going to add a little bit of clarity, a little bit of texture a tiny bit of dehaze. Okay. I'm digging that. That's the before. That's the after. You can really start seeing a bit more of this combine when I do the before and after or the, excuse me, the balers. Um, so that is working out nice. Don't increase the saturation on the snow unless you want <laughs> oh, general, I just, I had to stop. I had to stop. <clears throat> okay, we're going to go in. We're going to grab another mask. We're going to create a new mask and we're going to select the sky. So let Sensei figure that out. There we go. Let's take the highlights down a little bit more. Just a little, we're gonna increase our whites. <clears throat> that is true, Devlin. All I know is watch out where the Huskies go. I agree with that one. I agree with that. Okay, why did it not make? See this, I have to agree. I cannot remember who brought it up. But if you do a sky mask, it should automatically name it sky. Just saying Photoshop or Adobe, just saying. Okay, I'm liking where that's going. Uh, let's get back into our global adjustments. Let's close down our masks. We're gonna add Do we want to go? I almost feel we want to go the other way. Um, we can add the texture in and then bringing down the clarity is really making the stocks over here pop. Um, I'm actually liking that quite a bit. So doing the before and after. I'm digging that. I am liking where that's going. Uh, oh yeah, you can see the crispy blue sky. You can see it in that puddle. Yeah. 
I wonder if it's ice. We're gonna add a little bit of vibrance. Not go crazy, just a little bit, just a little bit. Now I feel, feel I, what's happening here, this region here is so bright, it's pulling your eye around. Um, it wasn't ice, Jennifer says. Things were finally melting, but it would have been cool. Yeah. <clears throat> I think what I want to do, let's try this. We're going to go in, we're going to grab another mask. We are going to grab a linear gradient, and we're going to pull from this edge, making sure... I'm thinking um, let's see what we can get here. I'm gonna bring down the exposure. We're going to increase the contrast. Let's bring down the whites just a tiny bit. Bring down the highlights. And in what I'm trying to do here, just so you know, is I'm trying to direct the eye away from this region back over into this region here. Because everything is so bright, it's very flat lighting. Yeah. Can you remove the track? The track? What track? I don't know. I, I don't know what you mean by remove track. Uh, Caroline says, my friend had a snowball fight with a Syrian refugee in a park the other day. He had never had one before. He asked what the kids were doing. That is awesome. That is awesome. Remove the vehicles. No, this the vehicles want to be here because that is the story that Jennifer wanted to tell with this photo. So, okay. I think that's about it. I don't I don't think I want to push it too far. I think that's about it. Yeah, not, not, not going to, let's jump into the, our details. Let's add some sharpening. Holding down the option key, we're going to go into our mask. And we want to make sure we have no sharpening in the sky. We just want to sharpen the outlines, which is right there. Do you need a white point with snow? I don't think so. I mean, it actually did a pretty good job um, with with the snow. I just wanted to make it a little bit cooler. So, uh, come on now, I keep doing that. Uh, this is the before. That's the after. Uh, ch -ch I think I did cool it a bit too much. So let's jump back into the basics. Double click on the temp. And there we go, subtle. Jennifer says that is so much better. I just really need to practice my landscapes. Don't go so harsh with the ed edges. Let it be what it is. <clears throat> Oliver, have a great day. Take care. Thanks for being here. Um, there is some room in the histogram, but not sure if we should push it. 
Well, there is and there isn't. I mean, if we jump into our blacks, boom. I mean, it's just kicking it over. So it's very, the blacks are there. They're there. Um, Anna, hello. So, you know, it's, I really don't want to go too much because I'm trying to bring out some of the detail out in the blacks. As for the whites or even the highlights, we can easily push it too far. So, okay, one more time before and after. Yeah, that's about it. Just being subtle. Some Sometimes, just be subtle. Be easy. Okay, so we've got that one. Uh, which? I'm, I'm seeing which ones we've got. And... Mafu, are you still here? Let me know, Mafu. Hey, no problem, Jennifer. Thank you for thank you for asking. Um, I mean, the biggest thing I don't know if I was really going if you were here yet when I was talking about it, but it was the crop. That was the only thing that was kind of getting me the the difference between this and that. Um, I was I was having issues with the crop. Just didn't feel balanced, like. I don't know. Too too cramped. Too that's maybe that's the word. Just too cramped. But okay. <clears throat> Mafu, I think, is not here. So we're gonna go into uh Lydia's. I think we're gonna dive into this one. So let's do this. I'm going to go command, let's uh, right click. We're going to go down to create a virtual copy. I want to try two things out, something I've never done before. And if we jump back in your photos to edit, we've got Doris. Doris says, in 1990, I won an architectural competition design of the facade. Unfortunately, I only have one day picture. I would like to make a night picture out of it because the colored tubes emit light. I just don't get good results. Sean, how would you do this manipulation from day to night? So, <clears throat> I've never actually tried to do a day to night in Lightroom Classic, so I'm going to first I'm going to try that. I am not I'm not expecting for good results but I've never tried it, so we're gonna do it. Jennifer says, that is my issue with landscapes because my main focus is usually up close. I worry that I'm not close enough. Ergo, cramped. Well, okay. Jumping back in. Now, the, the big thing about hitting D for default, actually, no, let's do this. Uh, we're going to make a virtual copy of that one. We're gonna open that up, hit D for default, and we're gonna reset the whole thing. <clears throat> you gave yourself enough room to play with. The problem is this, if this is supposed to be the subject, these are way too close to the edge way too close. You want them in about this area right in here is where you would want it to be. Um, you could you could have just looked left because in reality, you've got no subject over here except for a nice flow, a nice line of trees, but you could have actually started the crop when, you, let me jump into crop unlocking the crop you could have actually moved to the left and started like that so 
that's a lot of room that you could have done. Um, Jennifer says, oh gosh, yes, they were way too close, but the next pitcher had a roadside blocking everything. Jennifer, you can Photoshop out a road sign easy. <laughs> okay, let's get out of crop. Hitting G. Now, what did Bruce said? Uh, I could see you doing a stretch with this, Sean. Those lines look awesome. Yeah. Okay, let's get into this. D for default. Again, I've got no idea how this is going to work, how this is going to look, um, but we're going to go for a night shot. So first off, what you want to do, we're going to bring down the exposure. Um, we need to cool it quite a bit, and this is just going to be trial of error. Uh, the director's commentary to the live action the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe had... <laughs> oh. Let's bring down our highlights. We're going to increase our shadows. We need to bring down our lights. Increase our blacks just a little bit. About right there. Doris, no problem. Um, I really don't know how far I'm gonna get with this before I'm just like, we're jumping into Photoshop. Apparently desaturation is important. Okay. Is there a preset for day for night or a filter in Photoshop? There is, General. There is. Um, if. Whoa. Hitting G for grid. Let's go Command E. Um, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to go Command J. We're going to come down to the adjustment layers and we are going to grab a. There's a couple different ways that we could do this. We could use a photo filter, that's a possibility. Um, let's try it. So coming up into the filters that you want, if you want to go with a deep blue and see what you get, uh, let's see. Yeah, it would be the color lookup table. Yeah, I'm going to get there. Is this a famous building or just a building in the area? This is a building in Switzerland, um, and it is, I actually have been Googling it, and um, I figured out ex exactly where to go. RB, I'm going to tell you right now, take it down a notch, because this is not your stream, so I know you always tell everybody exactly what to do and how to do it not here take it down a notch okay so it is feffinger feffinger strasse in switzerland so yeah i actually found it on google earth streamer rules their streams yeah yeah that's true so sandrine also 
saying to jump into color lookup. And within the color lookup, if we come up to the load 3D LUTs, you can come down and right here, you've got a night from day color lookup. So boom, it kind of gives you the start of what you are trying to achieve. And looking at that, jumping in back into Lightroom Classic, you can kind of see the comparison of what you're trying to do. Um, like that's really blue, really blue. Now coming into here, I like, I like it, but again, it feels way too blue. Um, Jennifer says, I think maybe it is the uh, curvature of it, but it reminds me of Disney Concert Hall. I'm a bit fascinated by architecture. Yeah, I would like to know, Doris, if you're still here, what you won, you, you won a competition for designing this? And here's the downfall. So I did a bunch of research on this building, figured out where it was. I found exactly where it is. And the way that I did that is actually coming in and finding one of these businesses, uh, because Doris did not send me enough information, but finding these businesses, finding their address and able, and I was able to look it up. I was stunned at the fact that there were no, um, there were no night photos of, of this building because Dora says that these emit light, these glow. So we were going to do a neon effect onto this. Um, yeah, believe me, I did a ton of research looking for some type of inspiration or, or something on this. So let's go ahead. We're going to get rid of that. Now, one of the issues that I've got right away is with the sky. <clears throat> it's snowing in New York. We had snow on Sunday morning here. I was stunned. I was stunned. So <clears throat> let's go ahead. We're going to turn that into a smart object using the claw. Let's go into edit and sky replacement. And let's see. See what we've got here. I don't think I've got any night skies added. Ooh. Okay. Okay, Dora says, I have the corrugated iron and the lighting design, not the building itself. Oh, okay, it's cool. So oh, you did say the facade. I gotcha. I'm with you. Uh, let's bring... All right. Whoops, did not mean to do that. Sorry, everybody. Yep, delete that. Uh, let's go in and grab the color balance. And I wanna pull a little bit of the blues out. Yeah, that's, that's, that's better. <clears throat> Bruce says, I tell you, I should be living somewhere like Buffalo or Alaska the way I love snow. Uh, Bruce, well, I think you know this, Bruce, but I'm from uh, upstate from Rochester 
and um, outside of Rochester, not Rochester. And I've got a uh, family up there, and I hear about it, and it's like, wow. Wow. Okay, next off, let's go ahead. We're going to delete that. Let's add an exposure. Bringing the exposure down just a little bit like so. Now, there are a ton of things that we can actually do with this photo and it's going to take a ton of time um if we start going in and turning the lights on in some of these uh the big thing that i kind of want to do is getting the glow effect and i think that's what i i like to do so Let's do that. Let's go ahead. We're going to add a new layer, not in the sky replacement group. And let me think here. We've got, I'm looking at the lighting overall. How do I want to do this? I need to make an adjustment really fast. Let's go with a gradient here. We're going to take this one down. Annika, hello. We're going to take the opacity down to zero. We're going to grab that. Ooh. This is interesting. I'm thinking how I would do this. Let's go Command T. Let's zoom out. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this, the building a little bit darker on this side. That's gonna be matching the clouds. So we're going to add a mask on that. It B for our brush. Actually, let's go V. Line this up a little bit better like so. Let's go into our masks. B for brush, we're gonna take the opacity down to 30, making sure we're painting with black. And let's do a little bit of blending here. Let's zoom in. Okay, I'm, I'm focused right now, people. I apologize. I'm not chatting much. Taking it to 40, switching back and forth between white and black.
Okay, just kind of get getting that. Man, zero. Uh, this is a retail place, not a house where people are living. Oh, okay. I'm talking about an upside down house. Gotcha. All right, let's make a new layer. Command zero. Now, thinking about the best way to do this, let's start adding some glow. And let's go ahead and grab the pen tool. We wanna make sure that it is a shape. We want no fill and we're gonna click and click. Let's go into our profile. Ooh, uh-oh. I was really hoping we were gonna have uh, the same profiles as an illustrator and we don't. We don't. Let's see, more options. No. Bummer. I'm going to have to rethink this now because what I was thinking about doing is actually Hmm. Let me think. Now I got to think about this. I think I am gonna to have to make it, instead of using a single line, we're gonna to have to try something different. We're gonna delete that, we're gonna make a new layer. Let's grab our pen tool again. We're in our shape, we're gonna go white as a fill. We're gonna say no stroke. And we're gonna to have to make a triangle. Okay, RB, have a good day. Thank you for being here. All right, let's do another one here. Uh, Jennifer says, this is kind of fun because my topic in class this week is about using color in Photoshop. All right. I think on this one, I'm gonna need to do it a little differently. Okay. So we gotta start naming these things. Uh, shape one, that's the long one. We're gonna go blue. That one's yellow. And these two are red. So we're gonna go red bottom and red top. Okay, so we've got these under control now. Uh, let's get into our blue one. And I think hit V for the V. Okay, I think we're good there. Let's go ahead. It's a shape right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a smart object on the blue one. Uh, let's double click into that. It's Okay, so we've got the white color right there. And what it's being affected is all of these color balances. So let's bring that up to the top, just like that. Next off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our effects and let's bring, let's cancel out of that. We need to bring down the, the actually we can just turn it off. 
I'm gonna hit I for the eyedropper. We're gonna grab that color blue. We're gonna grab that color blue. Now going into our effects. And first thing we're gonna do, let's go with an outer glow. We're gonna grab that white, grab that blue, hit OK, and take this down to linear dodge. Take our opacity up to 100 so we can see it. Uh, So quite a bit. And all right, Jennifer saying, I know this is really dark film. Okay. Talking about movies. We need to go into our inner glow. And the thing to remember what you've got going on here is usually what occurs is you're going to see the center is going to be white when it comes to, I'm assuming these are like neon. Um, that's what we're going for here. Let's open up the opacity quite a bit. Let's zoom in. Let me see what we've got. I've got the opacity up. I'm, I can see the preview right there and I'm not really seeing. A lot adjusting. Oh, because we're in lighten and it's white. Come on, Sean. Come on. Let's go in linear burn. There we go. Zoom out. Ah, hitting OK. I like the inner glow that we've got going on. Uh, the outer glow, of course, is way too much, but we're going to take care of that because we need to bring down the opacity our spread. And we can actually increase the size. Zoom out so we can see what we've got going on. That's kind of getting there. That's that's not bad. That is not bad at all. Um, see what we can do. Let's let's go ahead. We're gonna add a drop shadow. Umicorn, hello. Now let's grab this blue again. And this time we're gonna go brighter. Lightsabers. Going linear dodge.
Okay. Command zero. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to grab our two red. We're going to turn that into a smart object. We're going to bring that one up to the top. Grab the yellow, bring that up to the top. We're going to hold down the option key on the effects. And we're going to drag it down and drag it down like so. Um, let's open up our yellow. And let's cancel out of that first. Let's hide that layer. Let's hide our adjustment layers right now. We're going to hit I for our eyedropper and make sure to get that yellow right there. Now, just so we can see what's going on, let's turn that back on, turn on that. And we need to just change all of these to our yellow. So we can grab that, take that right there. And we'll do some fine tuning here. get to the red again turning that off turning that off hitting our eyedropper what do I got point sample <clears throat> let's zoom in I feel like I'm not getting the right red that I want okay All right, we need to do a few adjustments here. Uh, the yellow, let's jump into our yellow one. And the inner glow is too much right now. So let's bring that down. Because I really like how you can get this white pop going up the center. So I dig that. Want to make sure not to lose that bit right there. Um, the red. Let's see what we've got going on here. Oh, not inner shadow. Turn that off. Inner glow, please. I had it. I had it up to a hundred. Are all of those up to a hundred? Ooh, that's. I forgot to change that. That is an oops. Ooh, ooh, I forgot to do that. Oh yeah, that's at 100, that's way too much. I dig the blue being at 100, but let's check it out. All right, clicking on that, going into our inner glow. I kind of like that. Okay. <clears throat> now we need to do some coloring. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to come back underneath all of our layers, our exposure layers. Let's grab another layer right there. And we're going to call this our blue, blue. Let's do that right there. And we're going to change this to a linear dodge. We're going to hit B for our brush. And Stuart, hello. We're going to turn on our Wacom. So actually, let's take that up. Take our 
low uh, yeah let's let's start like at maybe 20 maybe okay so make our brush smaller making sure we're on a soft brush we are hitting I for the eyedropper I'll grab that blue right there going back into our brush and ooh even 20 is too much we need to bring that down to like 10 let's try 9 ooh <clears throat> okay Now we would get some of this glow going on that edge right there. Come opening that up just a little bit. We're going to add A little bit on this tree. Let's zoom in. Making our brush smaller. Nope, Command Z, Command Z, Command Z. Making it really small. That's a straight line. So let's do this. Let's just go click, holding shift, click, holding shift, click, holding shift, click. Okay, we're gonna grab that blue. We're gonna go darker still. Increase our brush a little bit. Oh, I need a new layer. That's not flying. That's not flying. And we're just darkening that up. Let's try something. I just made it. I just thought about yesterday's DCC and let's actually try it. Let's go, go ahead. We're going to grab a curves adjustment layer. You're going to increase everything. Grab that, hit command I, deselect, painting with white, so hitting X. We still have our flow very low. We can increase the size of our brush. And just doing a little bit of blending. Okay. 
If the saber is pointed, so is the shadow or glowing shadow. Okay. Whoops. Feel we need to. Let's take down. Let's go into our blue. Take down the opacity just a little bit. Let's get back onto our curves. Okay. Let me think here, what would we have That's not looking bad. That's, that's, it's getting there. Okay, let's go ahead. We're gonna make a new layer. Let's call this one our red. Let's zoom in. Hitting I for our eyedropper. Let's grab that red. Linear dodge. B for our brush. We're still at 9%. We can just add. Just adding some red in there. Okay. Be a little bit more. Ooh, color looks way better. Oh, oh, look at that. Ah, uh, I. I need to, uh, so Stuart is saying using transparency shape layer. So if I jump in, what we've got here is in the layer style on the first page, we've got it clicked on. So let me move over and watch this area as I turn it off and on. So it's giving me a glow which I'm loving, but the issue is uh, I want the red right now. So if we, let me hit OK, let's get back into our reds. Like that's all we've got. If I turn it off, it turns right back to white. <laughs> so that's not what we want. So we're going to hit OK. Let's get back down to our red. Take that back to color. I'm digging that. I am digging that. <clears throat> okay, we need to add just a little bit more color going in the building. That's way too much. Command Z, Command Z. We need to take our flow way down. Like I just want a hint of red. Uh, 
Okay, let's get back into our curves. Light these, lighten up these edges now. Very subtle. Yeah, it's actually, um, let's jump back into here. There's, oh God, I'm trying to remember. It's linear dodge. Is it color dodge one of them? Yeah, it's I'm getting it's giving me the glow, but I I don't like I'm it's pulling the red out. That's the problem I'm having. <clears throat> yeah, Anna Anna did it. Um ooh, command Z, command Z. Anna did it, uh, Sam Peterson did it, um, who else? A lot of people. Carl, hello, Burnt, hello. So let's get in here. Just lighten up these edges. And taking that red down, we're gonna take it down just a hair. Okay, let's do a yellow. Let's grab a new layer. Grabbing the eyedropper. B for our brush. And let's set that to color. Get a little bit of a reflection in the window. Well, I think Vikram, due to the fact that it's at a point that we're not getting that big of a mix right there, which is perfectly fine. Could have busted out the lighting effects. Used to use those loads back in the day. Making a new layer. Let's go. What do we want to do? Let's go up. We're going to go image. Excuse me. We're going to go edit. Fill. We're going to go 50% gray. We're going to hit OK. Oh. We got to bring that to the top, bring that to the top, switch it to overlay or soft light. So we're going to go soft light. 
And let's go ahead and we're going to start doing some burning. So let's switch it to mid-tones. Bring that down to about 30% as the exposure. Let's start burning. We could, eh, I don't think I'm worried about that. I was thinking that we could actually start doing a little bit of light spill on the ground. Um, to be honest, I don't think I'm worried about that. Definitely need to darken up. Carl, hello. I don't know if I said hello to you yet. Good to see you. Yeah, I think I think we're getting there. That's not not bad. All right. So Yeah, Doris says the gray layer and burn is a good idea. That, okay. Um, yesterday's daily challenge was about dodging and burning. And there's a couple different ways to do it when you're using dodge and burn. As you can see right here, I've got a curves layer that I use to actually throw highlights onto the building to make sure that it's non-destructive um, using the dodge and burn tools are destructive because you have to actually be on the layer. So using a 50% fill and then using the dodge and burn tools directly onto that um, will make it non-destructive. So even if I want to jump in, I've been doing a lot of uh, burning. So let's go in. We'll do some dodging. We need... Let's go into our mid-tones, making our brush way smaller. And we can just go in and give, you know, a little bit more highlights, getting more of a pop on some of these. So you can use the same layer, which is really cool and quick um, it is recommended to do two separate layers so that way you've got one dodge and one burn layer but this is just a different technique so is there an inherent difference between using the dodge and burn tool 
on a neutral overlay layer as opposed to using low opacity soft brushes black and white? I don't think so. Um, I've never done the soft brushes with black and white using that for dodge and burn. Um, it's a genuine question. I am more of a curved mask layer. So am I, Sandrine, you know, but I'm streaming, so I like to do things as multiple different ways as possible. I was talking to Daryl about this. I know the digital artist. He works with Create Layers for Dodge and Burn, yes. Kath says, I use this similar technique for retouching. Which one? Do you use the curves or the 50% gray. I'm curious. But let's go ahead and <clears throat> by the way, hello, welcome in. I didn't say hello to you yet. Hopefully you're having a great day. And let's go ahead and command S. We're going to save that. That's going to save it directly back into Lightroom Classic. And we can turn off some of these layers. 50% gray, Kath says. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Bushan, hello. Sup. <laughs> so, Doris asked me if I could take this photo and turn it into a night photo with the lights on. Now, pretty much that's all the information that I was giving up, given it, it was given. And so I wasn't sure if these are neon lights, if they're tube lights, what they are. So I decided to take it upon myself. So we're gonna do a quick, quick recap and I'm gonna double click the properties tab to close that down so you can see all the layers. Hashim, hello. So the very first thing I did is I did a sky replacement because no matter what you do, you're going to have issues with this cloud. Uh, Sandrine says, I generally, ha generally have one curves layer masked for dodge and the other for burn. That's what I do usually. Each of them with a hue saturation layer clipped onto them because dodge and burn affect saturation, particularly skin tones. Um, or you can change the blend mode to luminance. So um, I, this is something I've learned recently. I use frequently separation technique. Yeah, I do too, but that's for cleanup, not dodge and burn. I mean, I love it. I, I love that. Um, uh, yes, luminance too, but I always forget. All right, let me let me show this. Uh, Biev, hello, good morning. Uh, so what I'm gonna do? Let's go ahead. Let's make a curves adjustment layer, and uh, I'm I'm glad you brought that up, Sandrine. So let's do something crazy. Let's actually let's go dark because any time that you go through and you start darkening things, it adds saturation into your photo. So you need to be aware of this whenever you're darkening an image. So we've got our image. We're going to go to our mask. We're gonna go command I to invert the mask. We're gonna hit B for a brush. And um, let's bring our flow up to 100 so we can really see what we're doing. And painting with white, I'm just gonna paint. Paint crazy. Now you can see what's going on with the sky in particular. So we've darkened it. I've got my burn. I have burned it. It looks beautiful. It's beautiful. I'm done. I'm joking. So what you want to do is you want to come up and turn your blend mode all the way. I'm sorry you can't see it to luminosity. So that way you are only dealing with you're only dealing with the actual highlights and shadows. The you're not messing with the temperature. So, um, big difference between off and on. <clears throat> so, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I wanted to show that tip instead of just trying to knock stuff out. All right, we're getting into a recap. Um, 
Let's see, what time is it? 2.30, I've got about a half hour left. Oh, Kirsty! oh, when did you pop in? You just popped in. Kirsty over on YouTube, hello, it is great to see you. Um, thanks for jo jumping in on YouTube. I haven't even looked over at that chat. So, uh, first thing I did is I did a sky replacement. Um, I knew I was gonna have issues with these whites. So we're just gonna get rid of it, just get rid of it. So I did a sky replacement, Photoshop did a great job. Alex, hello, Mr. Silva, good to see you. Um, so that's the first thing, boom, sky replacement, we got it dark. Uh, next off, I started adding in our color adjustments. So first thing I did is I put in a color lookup, which is the day to night LUT. <clears throat> Next off, we added a color balance, which is very subtle, but all I'm doing is taking a little bit of the blue out because it was a bit too much blue. So very subtle, but I, I like the way it looked. Next off, exposure. We're just darkening up a little bit more. Next off, we added our lights so we've got our yellow light turning our red light on turning our blue light on uh, as you can see if I double click on our effects uh, behave uh, sorry for this question but are you editing this photo just for architectural project today's stream is how I would edit your photos so people within the community has, has been sending me photos and I go through and I edit them in Lightroom or Photoshop um, and show how I would edit it. One of the Doris within the community won an award for the facade. Uh, this is a building in Switzerland and she only has day photos. So she asked me if I would turn this into a night photo and turn the lights on. So that's what I'm doing. So in the effects, what I did is I added an inner glow, an outer glow, and a drop shadow to kind of get this neon effect. Once we were there, I wanted to darken up that side of the building a little bit more. So I added a purple gradient. You can see it down here. Now I started adding in some of the color spill and I can see I got an issue. So B for brush, I'm going to hold down the tilde key on a US keyboard and we need to paint that away right up there. I got a little crazy with my Wacom. All right, then we added a little bit of shadowing. We've got the red spill. We added the yellow spill. I added a highlight. So I started dodging and burning or I started dodging. That would be a dodge layer and then did some overall dodge and burn. Now, <clears throat> this is cool. So I'm going to go command option shift E. And what that's going to do is actually merge all visible layers, but I've got all the layers still there. So everything is still adjustable. I am going to go, let me think about this. I'm going to go Command J. We're going to turn this into a smart object. I'm going to go ahead and go into Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. How big is this? We need to take down to about 10 pixels. We're going to hit OK. We're going to go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And coming up into our basics, we're going to bring up the exposure one stop. We're going to hit OK. Next off, we're going to go in and that's a bit too much but i'm digging it <laughs> i'm digging it uh we're gonna go soft light i think overlay is too much we're gonna go soft light uh let's bring down 
the opacity just a touch. There we go. Doris says, thanks a lot, Sean, for this cool day to night demonstration. I learned a lot. I am happy. <clears throat> so let's do, that's the before, that's the after, just to give it a little bit more pop. Yeah. Yeah, I dig that. Let's go command shift four. I need a thumbnail. So this will be my thumbnail photo. Let's do that. <clears throat> All right, now let's save again. Command S to save this. And if I had time, and I'm talking a lot of time, what I would do is actually come in. Sandrine, have a great day. Thanks for being here. What I would do is actually come in here and turn the windows on, like turn the lights on. Um, let me show you a technique here. And let me think. <clears throat> Where was it? Where are you? Come on. I thought it was a cover. Well, okay, this is... Th All right, so this was a day to night photo that I worked on uh, for the Daily Creative Challenge. So this was shot, you know, middle of the day. Um, <clears throat> and so what I did is I actually went through, I turned on all the lights, including the street lights down here. So I would kind of do the same thing, um, had to add a lens flare, of course, but I would do the same thing. I would go in and turn on a few lights, um, but I just, I, that's going to take way too much time and we're not going to do that today. All right, let's get back into Photoshop. Actually, let's get into Lightroom Classic. <clears throat> All right, so hitting G. Now you can see, let me actually set this one back. Let's reset it. There we go. Little bit of a difference. Little bit of a difference. Before after before after that was fun <clears throat> um actually while i'm thinking about it let's jump into photoshop i'm going to go up file we're going to export export as uh yeah that's fine we can do this it's a small file. We're gonna export it as a JPEG. And Doris, this is for you. Let's go into desktop. We're gonna save it. Let's jump back over into the Discord. And under Doris, under your photos to edit, you can actually download this photo. So let me bring it in. There you go. Be proud. Well, not of my edit, but of the fact that you won an award. <laughs> uh, okay, let's jump into Lightroom Classic. That was fun. That was fun. Um, kind of hard, but I dug it. Dug it. Let's see here. I've got about 20 minutes. So let's knock something out quick. Vikram, I think I want to knock out one of yours. Let's see what you've got. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. I want to find something that jumps out at me. Start the clock. We'll be here for another 
another hour. Mm, I don't know if I want to do that. What did you... No, no, I'm not going to dot. Go down that rabbit hole. I mean, these are absolutely gorgeous photos that do not need... Um, I mean, the, the editing is so minimal that it needs. I, I don't even want to play with them. Um, so I... I'm, I'm good. Your photos are too good, Vikram. Too good. Henrik, are you still here? If Henrik's here, we can, we can knock out Henrik's. Actually, I don't know. Henrik's, I'm going to, I'm going to, we need to work in Photoshop in that one. All right, Vic, Vikram's still here. These are Bruce's. You know what? I want to do something soft. I want to do something soft, actually. So sorry, Vikram. Is that in focus? Hmm, missed focus. Okay, let's work on this one. This is gonna be a tough one um, because of the composition that we've got this bright white spot up here is not good. Um, it's drawing your eye away from the subject and so it's it's uh not good we're gonna work on this one this one will be easy i've got 15 minutes left let's get going come on sean come on get going so first thing i want to do is i am looking to see if there's anything to get rid of uh, I do want to get rid of this. This might be a little too much to do in Lightroom, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna give it a go. So we're gonna use the new Content Aware Erase. We're gonna increase the size of my brush and let's just see how Sensei deals with this. Oh my gosh! Holy snikes! Boom! I cannot believe it did that good of a job. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> okay, that's Sensei. Wow. Wow. Okay. Ah. <sighs> Amazing. Uh, I'm trying not to think of that, Stuart. Okay, we're going to bring down the highlights. We want to bring the highlights down out of the whites so we can bring in a lot more of this texture and also the beautiful dew or raindrops. They could be snowdrops because of where Bruce lives. It's a possibility. We are going to not worry about um, our contrast, bringing our shadows down. We're gonna increase the whites just a tiny bit. We're going to, our blacks don't wanna clip right there. We are going to bring our texture down. We're gonna bring our clarity down. Actually, let's bring the clarity down and the texture up. So we're gonna soften this up. We're gonna go a negative dehaze. So we're adding a little bit of haze to it. We're going to add a little bit of vibrance. Uh, just use the nodding duck finger. <laughs> uh, I don't know what those things are called. The nodding duck, the uh, drinking water thing. Where's any key? Okay, 
just adding back a little bit of contrast, taking away our height, our pure whites and our pure blacks, which is good. Um, next off, let's get into the HSL. We want to go ahead, luminance, we're gonna grab our picker, and I wanna grab this purple, and I wanna get this purple to pop. Doing that right there. Let's grab these greens. We're gonna darken the greens up a little bit. We're gonna take, whoops, sorry about that, everybody. We're gonna take this into our saturation. Let's bring our greens down just a little bit, like so right there. Um, what could I have done in camera to help with the highlights? Always shoot for the highlights. Always, excuse me, always expose for the highlights. Always. So if there is a sky and you have a white cloud, expose for that white cloud. All the dark stuff underneath, you can get it out if you shoot raw. So shoot raw and expose for highlights. Those are the two most important things that you can do uh, that you want to do for sure. Um, Okay. Let's give it. We're going to give it a strong vignette. We want you looking at this flower. Ah, uh, thank you, Kirsty. This looks fantastic. Thank you so much. Feel. I went. What did I do? I lost. There we go. I lost a little bit of the punch. From the purple so I wanted to bring that back in um, I'm really digging those yellows that we've got going right there let's go ahead let's go into our detail gonna sharpen the heck out of this <clears throat> really sharpen we're gonna hold down the the option key grabbing our mask to bring this over right there okay so a little bit of an artistic uh, edit there rather than going more traditional uh, I was really impressed the fact if you look up here in this corner that the new content aware erase tool did that good of a job. I mean, nailed it. Frank, take care. Have a great day. Thanks for sharing your work with the team. Um, I dig that. It's a nice soft. Yeah. Okay. Let's hit G for grid and we're going to come back to the intro scene. Um, first off, everybody that submitted photos, um, thank you so much. Uh, Doris, I hope you're happy with yours. That was actually a lot of fun. It's been a long time since I've done that. Justin, hello. Would you recommend always using light shots, camera raw filter over Photoshop if you have the choice? Justin, okay. This always happens right when I'm leaving. Uh, Justin, <clears throat> this is what I my workflow is. 95% of my workflow when it comes to photography is in Lightroom Classic, simply because of organization. So due to the organization that I use in collections, 
Um, in this catalog, this is my, let me come up here. We go up to file. You can see I've got my regular Lightroom catalog and then my live stream catalog. So this is my live stream catalog. Um, but organization, so all of my photos are going to be in Lightroom Classic. Now, if I've got some heavy lifting to do, I will go into Photoshop. Now, Camera Raw in Photoshop and Bridge, Lightroom, Lightroom Classic are all almost the exact same. They have improved to the point that there's very minute differences between Lightroom and Photoshop, Adobe Camera Raw, and Lightroom Classic. So, um, the organization and, and editing, and I don't wanna say basic editing anymore because Lightroom Classic with its new masks, oh my God, you know, we've, they've introduced Sensei, they've introduced so many new tools into Lightroom Classic over the last couple of years that it's just mind blowing. Um, I love it. I love it the way, what, where Lightroom Classic is going. That's not saying anything bad about Photoshop. I love Photoshop. Photoshop is absolutely my almost tied between Lightroom and Photoshop. Photoshop doesn't have the organizational skills. That's it. So instead of working in Camera Raw, I'm gonna work in Lightroom Classic, and then when I need to, or when I want to, like today, jumping into, let me get back to, getting back into here. You know, I could not have edited, edited this photo from here to here in Lightroom Classic. Can't do it. Just, you know, maybe, <laughs> I doubt it. Maybe, um, off the top of my head, I, I, I don't know, I wouldn't know where to go, but in light, in Photoshop, okay, yours, you want a night shot? There you go, jump into Photoshop and do it. Um, so hopefully that answers your question, Justin. I, I'm, yeah, organization, short answer. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> Thank you all for being here. Um, today was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Chat was going. Uh, still, the Adobe Creative Gang problem does not solve. What are you talking about, Vikram? What? Doris, you are welcome. <clears throat> Vikram, I want to know what you're talking about. What problem has not been solved? Anyway, so while he types, um, I've heard people say Lightroom Classic is for photo editing, Photoshop is for photo compositing. Yes, but Steven, it was the difference between Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. Uh, Justin says, yeah, it sure does. Lightroom does more than I expected it does. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, Oh, that Adobe gang. Okay, doesn't have access. Gotcha. It's probably as much personal preference. Um, I personally, I, oh yeah, okay. I just said personally. But I cannot understand if you are a photographer, if you've got, if you're any type of artist or for that matter, you're any type of of, of professional, you have an organization. You have to be organized somehow. We don't need to look at my big head. Um, you have to be organized somehow. Let it be PDFs, let it be artwork, let it be photos. So um, being able to use the tools that you have, there's people that use Bridge, that's great. Um, a colleague of mine in Boston would swear by Bridge and would never use Lightroom Classic. Okay, um, I'm fine with that. They're organized as long as you are using the tools to organize. Now, Adobe Camera Raw, Photoshop, does not have the organizational skills. So you are gonna, or the abilities, I should say. So you are gonna have to be overly um, organized in your file formats. If you're not using Bridge or if you're not 
We don't swear in Boston. Rick, hello, and you lie, sir. You lie. Um, you, you, you have to be organized to an extent within your file formatting, hard drives, uh, external hard drives, all of that. So Lightroom Classic for my workflow is just because I've been in it for so long. Boom. <clears throat> it's like a rug. <laughs> what lies ahead? Vikram, I don't know. I'm an Adobe Express ambassador, not a Lightroom Classic ambassador, which I would love to be. Anki says, thank you, Sean. You've, as well as the chat, great companion today while I'm working on my circus slideshow for the theme. I can't wait to see it, Anki. Everybody, so we've got a couple more weeks for the Creative Circus Challenge, Community Challenge. So start working on it. If you haven't started, um, let's get those in. And I know most people prefer to work under a deadline. So this week, I'll be coming up with a deadline. Michelle says, how many weeks? It's either going to be the end of the month or the beginning of next month. I, I haven't sat down with the calendar and gone through it yet. But um, I'll, I'll be putting together a deadline. Uh, so I'll put it, I'll be putting it in the Discord and under Creative Circus. Easter? Maybe? I don't know. I think Thursday I will be working in Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Express doing a spring theme um, post. Kind of like what we did for... Uh, <laughs> kind of like what we did for International Women's Day. Lydia, April 1st, don't fool us. <clears throat> uh, Justin says, by the way, for me, the Community Challenge doesn't have a file currently. Don't know if that is for anyone else. What do you mean, Justin? Wait, oh my God, I'm really trying to leave, people. Justin, you are really good at making me stay. Uh, so I am in my discord. If you want to join my discord, you can scroll below the stream and it says join Sean's discord. Pretty easy. Jumping into the discord under challenges, you will see creative circus right there. Clicking on the creative circus at the very top, you will have all of the information. Um, and this is where you would post it as well as to, Instagram using the hashtag daily creative challenge. Are we talking about the Photoshop CC? No, this is the Kozel creative circus community challenge. Justin, I know you're new here. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background every now and then once, twice a year, I do a, um, community challenge. Uh, and I try to give stuff away. But you are talking about the DCC. The, it used to be the DCC. Uh, Photoshop Creative Challenge. Let me scroll. We don't want to see that guy. Boom. Creative Challenges. And you're saying there's no file. Um, okay. That's today at 1 p.m. It's 3 right now. Starter file. Okay, there's nothing in there. There will be, or may, maybe there won't. What is, what is today's challenge? Maybe some on the mode power can drop the PC. Oh, sorry. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Actually, let me do it this way. Bruce, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming, Bruce, just wait. So for anybody new here, here is a link to the Photoshop creative challenge. Um, here, what you will see is, what do we have? Selective color for portraits. Uh, you can watch the videos, you can get the starter files and yep. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Hopefully that's helpful to people. 
but I don't know if Halise is going to be able, or no, not Halise, excuse me. Uh, Idara is going to be able to give portraits away. I don't know. So don't listen and drive sometimes. You may have an accident. That is true. <clears throat> now I'm really leaving. Okay, Justin, no more questions. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Anyway, I appreciate everybody spending their time with me today. Um, had a great time. It was fun checking out everybody's work in the uh, uh, Discord. Thank you for sharing and keep posting your work and I'll keep showing it off. Um, <laughs> again, I will see you all Thursday. I will see you actually in chat in an hour. So go get something to drink, uh, stretch, save your work and the old, yeah. Um, okay. I'm out of here. I'm reading chat too much. Everybody take care. Have a great day. Stay safe. Stay creative. Hi, Bruce's mom. And just be nice. Bye everybody. <laughs>